Salut les Rangers, aujourd'hui nous sommes en direct du Comic Con de Bruxelles. C'est pas compliqué, ça va être une journée de dingue. Rencontre avec JDF. Regardez bien ce qui suit. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Phil from France. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, we know first the subtitle before the Power Rangers, and uh, I would like to know if you you have invited. Excuse, excuse my English. <laughs> if you were the, if you were invited by uh, by Japan to do some. Uh, Some cameos, some some apparitions, some, some stuff with uh, with uh, the Japan team at the same time. Uh, if uh, if uh, if a crossover project exists, and uh, the second question is, uh, what about the, the next movie of Power Rangers? Of Power Rangers, will you be uh, in the movie? Okay, so the first question was would I be involved, yeah, would I want to be involved in any crossover episodes and things? Yeah, sure. I love Power Rangers. The reason why I did Bat the Sun, the reason why I do all the Power Rangers, the Super Mega Force, uh, you know, reunion, is to, to see my fans get excited. Because for me, this is not a job. This is not my job. I got corporations, I'm happy, I do what I want, but this is a hobby for me. I guess to reach out and, and meet people and appreciate people. So yeah, anything that Power Ranger has that's official, that's I'm invited to, you will see. If other people don't do it, maybe it's an issue with money or something else, but anything that they want me to do, I'll be involved. You uh, need to go to Japan? Yeah, but see, the Japanese footage and the American footage are some kind of like, I'm not too sure. I want to meet the original Green Ranger from Japan. But if they did that, I would love to do it. But I think it's a licensing right. Something to do with licensing. Yeah, I know. Um, and the uh, second question, again, real quick, what was it? What was that for the microphone? I think it was. Oh, uh, the second movie. Okay, in regards to the movie, I really don't know much about the movie. I will state that Savon says that they, you know, that it's not done, that they're still working on it. Um, and they're not going to let fans down. But I don't know, because the movie script's not even written. So, you know, sometimes in Hollywood, it's the big hurry up and wait. That's why when I, I, I just recently played Bloodshot on a show called Ninja Jack vs. The Valve Universe. I play a character named Bloodshot. The movie rights are trying to be picked up, maybe other actors playing it, I don't know. But the movie version, filmed by Bat and the Sun, Just imagine that TV show that comes out. It's amazing. Like, my role as Bloodshot, I love, but all the other superhero characters are awesome. And that will be out soon. And when you see it, if you don't know who Valiant is, which I didn't, I didn't know Valiant, I didn't even know who Bloodshot was, you might not even. Raise your hand if you know Valiant. See? So they say they're the third largest comic books in the world. I'll tell you one thing. Nobody knew what Valiant was on my fan base. Everybody who's part of my fan knows Bloodshot now. And so when you see it, Valiant will start, you'll start being a Valiant fan. I used to collect comics all the time. I used to collect Marvel and, uh, not DC, I know, I'm sorry. I used to collect Marvel and I never heard of Valiant. So now we're trying to, to, to uh, promote Valiant in my new character as a Bloodshot. I'm a Marvel fan too. Where's the next queen? Yeah, got it down here, go for it. Uh, I am Robert from Poland. Funny enough, I was one of these current, growing karate kids. I was inspired by this TV show back there. So thanks for coming, thanks for talking about karate so much. Thank you. My question is about um, how did you feel when you were approached to make a cameo in the latest movie? Honestly, when, it was the only time I've been in the cinema and I've seen the entire audience stand up and applause to a movie being screened when there was this few seconds coming. Yeah. How did you feel when you were approached to uh, I How did you approach it? Well, I, I always knew I was going to be in the movie and do a cameo with me and Amy. But uh, it was really great to see around the world that audience was like, wow, you know, and I think the director was like, oh, we've worked so hard on everything else and he gets the screams, right? Uh, just a small cameo. So it was, it was fun to be part of it. I did two cameos, I grew my hair out, and then I did a cameo, then I cut it from Bloodshot, and then I went back to do another cameo. Um, so it was it was great. I mean, I you know obviously you know I'd love to have a bigger role, but I'm always part of the brand. It was a, it was exciting to do that. Poland, my uh, 
just easier to run down on me because I'm not a lot of people ask. My my uh, grandfather's from Greece. My grandma, they're all passed away though. My grandfather's from Greece. My grandma is from Poland. So I have Polish there. Uh, my mom's Polish. My uh, my dad is from German, Germany. My Oma is from uh, Germany. And my dad, my Opa is actually from Czechoslovakia. So the only person born in the United States was my mom. You know, so, uh, so you know, Poland and Polish and all that stuff. But uh, anyway, I just had to say that. So, yeah, we got another question down here. So, yeah. Uh, geez, my name's Kevin. Um, everybody's talking about the power rings, and I'm, I'm a big fan of that, but how do you feel ready when we you fight CM Punk? <laughs> CM Punk. Man, I tell you what, he doesn't want to fight me. He doesn't. His camp, Dana White wants it, everybody wants it, he doesn't. He's fighting a guy that I know, evidently, there was two guys, Eric Jackson, fought Mickey Go. Mickey won, and now Eric Jackson lost to Mickey Gold, and the first round is supposed to fight CM Punk. If I fight him, it would be a much better fight, a bigger draw, but I was the doors were closed in every area, saying he's too experienced, I'm too experienced, I'm too experienced, that's all I heard. And I can't believe I'm hearing that I'm too experienced in the UFC. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You have to be experienced to be in the UFC. So CM Punk needs a win. Uh, Eric is a, uh, or, you know, Jim, uh, Jackson's a friend of mine, and uh, if that fight happens in June, great. But uh, I don't think CM Punk can run the whole time from me. There's going to be a time where he has to stand up and say, "All right, I'm going to fight him." Or if he wants to do it the way Power Rangers does it, he will say, "All right, I will fight you." Yeah. <laughs> right? But he won't. So. Um, raise your hand. Questions, I'll talk to you and then you can come this way or the speak. See, we're here in Belgium, right? We're here in Brussels and people want to see me fight CM Punk in Brussels. They know who I am, they know who CM Punk is. Let the fight happen, I don't understand. I go around the world and that's the question people ask all the time. Dana, people, business people, you gotta be smart about what's going on here. You know what I mean? Anyway. <laughs> Call me, probably not. <laughs> Next question, yes sir. Hi Jason, Patrick Manel from John Campbell's, you, you may now see the guys over there. And my question is nearly over in your vaccine and the original Power Rangers. Uh, when would you say was the saddest moment you had to guess? The first time you lost the power of the Green Ranger or when you gave up over to TJ and the others in the Turbo scene? I gave up my powers up in Turbo because it was just my time to leave, right? Um, the uh, losing the Green Ranger power, I did another show which was called VR Troopers, but it was called Cybertron. So at that time, there was a lot of controversy. A lot of other Rangers left. It was just, it was just too, too hard hanging for me. And I know the other Rangers left. We've all grown up now. You know reasons why they left. It was a money issue, and I just did not want to be involved. So I got my own show, Cybertron, on my own stage. I was so pumped up. I was like, yeah, goodbye, all the drama. I'm going to my own studio. And then they said, well, the Green Rangers' powers are you know, gone, and then you want to come back as a white ranger, and I was like, ah, yeah, kind of, but every kid around the world, and every parent, called Fox Studio and said, my kid's not eating, my kid's not going to school, you better bring this guy back. <laughs> so Savon said, uh oh, we have somewhat of a legal issue, you gotta come back to the show, and I was like, uh oh, but I'm so glad I did. The white ranger episode was the highest rated episode in the world. And you know, one thing I'm proud of with the Power Rangers, is that we, we were the number one kid show in the whole entire world without social media. We didn't have any of this stuff. We did it the old fashioned way. You know, ride a pony in, do a note, they'll take that note, ride the pony back to New York, put it in the newspaper, it wasn't that bad. But um, what I'm saying is that we didn't have social media back then to help us. We were the number one show in the world, which I was pretty happy about that. So it was probably losing the uh, Green Ranger and I was happy coming back as the White Ranger. All we needed was that song, Guess Who's Back, Back again, Tommy's back, tell a friend, guess who's back, guess who's back. Anyway, Eminem. Okay, we got a poor version of Eminem. Any questions down here? Uh, first of all, thank you for coming all the way to Belgium. Um, funny enough, I wanted to ask about the uh, VR Troopers pilots, Cybertruck, and where are the decision lines, and uh, when you're going to return to Power Rangers. Um, whose decision that was? But you basically answered that already. Uh, but the second question is, were you never like, afraid of near the end of Turbo, or at least your case as a Turbo Ranger, that 
people who love me, you as just Tommy Oliver, Jimmy Potter Ranger, and now Jason David's a uh, friend of the martial artist. You know what? It's with with the power of social media, you don't know how many places I go and people go, JDF, JDF, JDF. You know, just because of the branding, sometimes I get thrown off. Very rarely people call me Tommy. Unless you call me Tommy, you're not on Instagram yet. So, you know, as far as the stuff I'm doing, I, I was never afraid of that. And even if I was stereotyped my whole entire life, I'm a superhero. Look how many people's lives I'm changing around the world. Some people, most people, run from who they are and who they used to be, and they don't embrace it. I've never ran. I was the first one to do Comic Cons, besides Johnny Young Bosch. I was the first one to do any of these shows. Now everybody wants to do them. Why? I'm just saying, I never ran from who I was, and I embraced Power Rangers. Going back to Dino Thunder, I tried saving ratings. Going back to Mega Force, I really believe in the brand. It's not about money, it's about my fans. I don't want to let that brand down. You know what I mean? So I was never worried about that. People now call me JDF. People now talk about my fighting. They, you know, I've been the voice of the Transformer of Titans Return. I got a ton of other stuff coming out. I did a movie called uh, Breath. It's called The Omni Boat. Uh, Robert Redford's in it. Some of the Stranger cast. A bunch of people. And it's a, it's going to be an award-winning film. And I just acted. No karate. You know, and, I, and of course with Bloodshot. So I'm not worried about that because it's just the decision and my destiny is from the guy I love. Whatever's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. When your time to die, it's his time. He will pull you, and that's it, you have no choice. So right now I sit on this stage for one reason, but that guy wants to be here, and that's it. You know? Good lady, you're probably wondering I'm referring to Zordon, that guy. I was talking about God. And yes, if you just be careful of those speakers of voice. Will you come back in the next Transformers, The Power of the Prime? The Power of the Prime, will you be in there? Oh, uh, I did the Titans, the Titans, uh, Titans Return with the show, I'm not too sure. They just did, I played Emissary, a new character called Emissary. I really like playing these new roles that's never been played before. Emissary is like this big, is like Ant-Man. Uh, and then I played Bloodshot, never been played before. So I really enjoy the roles where I don't have to compete to people. Tommy, never played before. Tommy can never be replaced, I don't care what you do in the movies. Tommy is never going to be replaced because why? I'm Tommy, that's why. <laughs> Was it, how was it for you, knowing you've already been in one of the biggest franchises in the world, to go into another one of the biggest franchises in the world? Was that quite daunting? It was good, it was really good. I got another opportunity that's on the NBA, but it's a whole different universe. So with the voice acting, I've been getting a lot of voice acting jobs that are big, big jobs that I love. So this next job I have is a pretty big thing. Um, I'm excited about that. I have like three big NDA projects, which means you can't talk about this year, that the fans are going to love every, every one of them, I promise. And I think everyone in this room has never been, oh, I wonder what that is. Uh, we're going to start wrapping up soon. We've got one, two, three, definitely, and then we'll see where we're at for time. And yeah, we'll try and get around you all. Yes, sir, you were first. Jason, wow. Um, Percy. 
just talked about. The one where it's really not that popular for film, but I can tell someone that, that's a big fan of mine that will watch these films. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I don't remember some of the lines from that. I do know how to say, Dragon Sword, I remember that. And how can you ever forget the line, it's worth your time! <laughs> we, we're gonna have to, of course, if you want to speak, you will be around there. You had the next question, sir. If you just take a step this way, just so you don't get... Is that a... Uh, no, oh, he's, he's already got something on his wrist ready for you. Uh, Dino Thunder. Question, go for it. Well, actually, I was about to ask him to say Morphin Time, but uh, I just think he did. It's Morphin Time! <laughs> I think every, I thought half this audience just went, I'm glad someone has looked at it. Just everyone was waiting for it. Sir, did you have a question? Just there you go. So, uh, hello, uh, Tommy, hello, Jason. Um, my question actually was, um, how was your reaction after Power Rangers Turbo when they asked, asked you to come back as the as Dr. O and as the Black uh, Dino Thunder Ranger? That's my first question and I've also got a simple yes or no question. Is it true that you ever got hurt in a mush pit of a system of a down show? That is true. I'll tell you my systems of a down. You guys know systems of a down? Oh, yeah. yeah. I was, in, uh, I was in Hollywood at the Roxy, and they just were trying to become a band. And this is how old I am. I was in a mosh pit, and uh, we were moshing around, and uh, I, someone pushed me from behind, and my eye cut open. They didn't know who I was, and I was like, who pushed me, who pushed me? The whole mosh pit stopped, by the way. And no one could tell me who pushed me, and on the way out, my face was really bleeding. And uh, Shavo was like, hey man, take care of your face. I'm like, no, no, that was good music, man. Like, I really love your music. And he gave me an eight, uh, a cassette, a demo cassette, and said, hey man, if you know anyone or whatever, again, he wasn't signed yet. And I took the cassette and said, thanks. Went back, got uh, my face stitched up, went back to Power Rangers. And I had to tell the producer, Jonathan, he said, what happened to your face? I said, um, I was in a mosh pit. And he's like, mosh pit? What is this mosh pit? I said, uh, you know, you, you go in there and slam people around. He's like, but why? And I was like, eh, it's just a mosh pit. He's like, now what are we going to do? So I had to wear a band-aid on my face. Remember all the episodes with the band-aid? You know? I, I pulled the, uh, was it Nelly? The, the band-aid on his face. It was never explained in the episode what happened to my face for seven, eight, nine, ten episodes. But it was systems of a down. So yes, that is true. <laughs> Incredible. And your other one was... Uh, First one again? I don't know what it was. I remember what she just said. Uh, so after Power Rangers Turbo, yes, I remember. I remember. So I went back to Dino Thunder. They called me, Doug Sloan and Nap, and they said, hey, can you help us? And I said, okay, help me with what? They said, we need the ratings are going down a little bit. And we need to boost the ratings up when you come back. And I went back, what's up, buddy? I went back as a doctor, however that worked. So I was the mentor, I went back to help them. I was in New Zealand filming. To my karate school at Stevenson Branch to uh, run my staff, so they turned me invisible. So that's why I was invisible at Dino Thunder, is because I was in LA while they were filming in, uh, in uh, New Zealand. So the great, the great thing about a show like that, you can watch someone who's invisible in the pizza. Big secrets here in Brussels, some, some stuff I've never shared before. Oh, this is good. Um, I, I guess you get this one. Well. System of a down conscious aside, what's the worst injury you've had whilst you're doing all this? Because surely you can't get through a whole arm of rage. Well, in the movie, Power Ranger movie, Johnny Young Bosch, if he ever tells you a story, don't believe him, by the way. But uh, we were practicing a tree flip right before I was filming the movie. I was like, okay, me and him used to tree flip all the time. And this was a palm tree, so it had stepping stones. You know, the palm trees, you could really step and get height. And uh, I told Johnny to spot me. And so I stepped so high, and Johnny's always like, commit to the backflip no matter what. So I went really high and I committed, but then I slammed my face on the floor. And Johnny didn't do his job, although he'll say, that's not how I went. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Johnny's supposed to spot me, and I slammed my face on the, on the floor, and I just felt like, you know, the, uh, the uh, gosh, what is the movies? The, when they go to Vegas, and the, the Hangover movie, where he wakes up and his tooth's gone, and they're like, what happened to your tooth? I just, I just opened, I said, hey man, are my teeth all there? My teeth were there. 
but my whole side of my face was cut up, and that was the first day filming in the movie. So there's a lot of shots I had to shoot like this, and they put this plastic on my face, and then they painted the plastic. So uh, that was probably the only serious injury, and then when I was skydiving, I broke my foot totally backwards, and the doctor said I'll probably never have a range of motion again, and I got 100% range of motion. That's why you don't listen to people when they say stuff like that. Oh, wow. So, it's incredible. I can't believe you think of that. Is there any point in the film where you, you you'll know, can you actually you look for it? No, you know, they, oh, they, they really just go yeah. they, they disguise it, Photoshop it. Yeah, no, nah, Photoshop it and stuff like that. And, you know, I healed pretty quick. So, uh, you know, it was, it was, the, the, the scratches were on my face, but they eventually went away. But, uh, yeah, you couldn't see it. You know, like in Mega Force, the, they shot with that helmet that had the silver stripe. That was the Disney brand. That wasn't the real original green. So and then they used the silver morpher for the Green Ranger, which is supposed to be gold, and the helmet's supposed to be green. So I told them to change it. They said, how come you want to change it? I said, because at every convention, I'm going to have someone raise their hand and go, hey, why was the helmet silver in uh, Mega Force? And why did you wear a silver morpher? So I made them change it. So there's a lot of secrets they can do in Hollywood. Nice. Uh, I think we've probably got time for definitely one more question. You had your hand, sir. If you can come forward, that will make my life so much easier. Pow, pow, pow. Nice. Sweet, sir. Hi. Um, I'm Chris. I'm uh, from Germany. Um, good to see you. Uh, good to see you. Thank you. Well, um, I love the comic books. Um, I saw the trailer a couple of days ago. And it was so awesome. And my question is, um, did their uh, greatest contact with you as a consultant? Are you talking about the Shattered Grid or the, the comic book in general? Oh, the comic book in general. Man, there's a friend of mine named Kyle Higgins who uh, wrote the book, and he's got an incredible storyline. And uh, that's who created the uh, Lord Dragon. So he created this whole universe, which is awesome universe. I wish I could just go back and refilm the whole show with the Boom Comics. And what I like about it is us you know, updated version of how we used to be. So we had cell phones, you know, like, so it's, it's updated. You know, we didn't, you know, so it's pretty cool and everyone's still in shape in the comic books. I like that. We're, we're still look the same. Uh, and it's a really good concept. So Kyle Higgins and his team and Boom put it together in March, I don't know, a year or two years ago. It was the top number one comic book uh, in March. And then, it, then I think Batman was the only one that beat it the next month. So it's a pretty big book, and the book's getting bigger, and Lord Dragon is getting bigger, and you'll start seeing cosplay a lot of different places. So, and Lord Dragon still needs so it's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I wish we had more time. We're generally coming to the end of this now. Jason, you're here all weekend, right? Yes, I'm here. I'll be back at the table, signing autographs now, and then I'll be here all day tomorrow. I think are you still live? Uh, well, I'm going to see you my here, blog. Because they said that they're about to go crazy this for you. This is for so my blog. Thank you, guys. Now, on the count of three, we need, we need to say it's for my time. Yeah. All right, this is for my blog. On my YouTube channel, partnered with Machinima. My YouTube channel is JDF FFN. Now we have to go. It's for my time. Super loud on the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you, sir. Brussels, thank you, that was awesome. Thank you very much. Right. One more time, come around. Do you stick around? We still